could you be using GraphQL or TRPC in your next project? It's a question I see a lot going around on Twitter lately. If you scroll to the Twitter feed, you'll see tweets like this, but you'll also see people responding. Why they dislike TRPC, or why they really like GraphQL, or the other way around, why they moved from GraphQL to TRPC. In this video, I'd like to show you the comparison between GraphQL and TRPC, if we can even make a comparison, because to be honest, it's a bit like comparing apples and oranges. GraphQL is best defined as a query language for APIs, meaning that you have complete control over the data that's being returned by a GraphQL API, just by defining the fields that you'd like to be returned in a GraphQL operation. And these operations could be a query, a mutation, or a subscription. When you have a GraphQL API, as you'd see here on the right side, this GraphQL API is often getting data from multiple data sources. These can be databases, REST APIs, or even other GraphQL APIs. In the case it's other GraphQL APIs, this is called federation, meaning you'll be getting data from different GraphQL APIs and bringing it all together in one big GraphQL schema. From your front-end application, you often interact with a GraphQL API using HTTP as a transport layer. Although GraphQL is transport layer agnostic, it's often implemented using HTTP. As with GraphQL APIs, GraphQL itself doesn't define how you implement a GraphQL API. How to implement a GraphQL API is left up to the GraphQL libraries and frameworks that you use to build a GraphQL API. TRPC, on the other hand, is a set of libraries to help you build end-to-end -end type safe APIs using TypeScript. It consists of two major libraries. The first one is a TRPC server in which you define your API schema and all the possible type definitions, including the resolvers or at least the functions that get the data out of your data sources. The other library is a TRPC client. So this client will help your front-end projects to consume the data from your TRPC server. So you won't be sending requests over HTTP directly. Instead, you'll be using the TRPC client to get the data from the server. You can also get the type definitions from the server directly, meaning that you don't need any external libraries in order to create these full stack end-to-end -end type safe applications. So how can we compare GraphQL and TRPC? Well, they are very different. GraphQL is a query language for APIs, where it's up to you, the developer, to decide how to build a GraphQL API and which frameworks and libraries to use. Whereas with TRPC, you already get a set of libraries that help you to build these end-to-end -end type safe APIs, all using TypeScript. Whereas with GraphQL, you have to decide between all the possible implementations and all the different programming language that are supporting GraphQL implementations. So how can we actually compare them? I often hear developers that like to compare GraphQL and TRPC based on the type definitions that you can generate. So with TRPC, you don't have to generate any type definitions at all. If you use TRPC to build your TRPC server, you already get the type definitions for free. You can directly use them using the TRPC client in any of your front-end projects that build within the same directory. With GraphQL, on the other hand, you have to rely on code generators to introspect your GraphQL schema and translate the GraphQL schema to TypeScript type definitions. This can be an annoying process where every time you make a change to your schema, you have to regenerate the TypeScript type definitions. Or maybe someone in your team decides to change the schema without telling you. You also have to regenerate the TypeScript type definitions. So this can be a troublesome process, which many developers actually move towards TRPC. Which in that case only makes sense if you don't want to create decoupled services. If you decide to do everything in one single project, it makes complete sense to use TRPC because you can rely on TypeScript. But on the other hand, if you're building with multiple teams, multiple clients, it makes more sense to use GraphQL. As GraphQL is programming language agnostic, you can use it with any programming language. So if you have one team that's building using Go, another team that's using TypeScript, they can still communicate with each other using the GraphQL schemas. Another statement from developers that I find a lot on Twitter is that they're finding it hard to build GraphQL APIs, which is essentially true. 
there are a million ways to build a GraphQL APIs using different frameworks or libraries in a gazillion programming languages. You could go schema first, where you first define the GraphQL schema, and then write the resolvers to get the data out of your data source and make it match in the GraphQL schema. You can also go code first or resolver first, in which you write the functions to get the data out of your data source and the GraphQL schema will be generated automatically. And if this sounds confusing, there's even better tools, such as StepSend, which is a GraphQL as a service that allows you to generate a GraphQL API based on your data sources. But besides building a GraphQL API, you also need to consume the GraphQL data in your front-end clients. For example, you can use a GraphQL client such as Urkel or Apollo Client, or you can use a plain old HTTP request to get the data from the GraphQL API. But again, there's many choices you have to make as a developer in order to use GraphQL. Whereas with TRPC, you get one library or a set of libraries that allows you to do everything you like to do, such as using the type definitions and consuming the API all from one single library. In the description of this video, you will find a link to a blog post in which I lined out all the differences between GraphQL and TRPC and how you actually cannot compare the two ways to build APIs. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. This way you will stay updated every time I post a new video.